We can rise to the occasion. We can build this nation moving forward. All that we need, visionary leadership, people who love their people, people who love the citizens, people who love the country, and then we can rise. We can fly again. Hope Restoration Ministries, restoring hope to our world. Welcome to our broadcast. Enjoy. Thank you for really believing in, in transforming and giving hope to the nations. Your impact has reached various nations, and we are beneficiaries thereof. So we really, really are excited to be here, and we are honored. Uh, and one more time, just one more time, just for me. I know my wife did a great job celebrating your segment, but just one more time. I, I love to honor, to give honor where honor is due. One more time, let's just stand, and let's just give Honor where honor is due. Let's salute, God, salute your men of God and glorify God. Thank you. Salute. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's go to work. We are in the book of Luke chapter number 17 and we're going to start from verse 11. The Bible says, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain, uh, a certain village, they met him 10 men. Everybody say 10 men. These men were lepers and they stood far off, obviously because of their condition. But with a loud voice, they, uh, they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And so as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks. And he happens to be a Samaritan. So Jesus said uh, to him, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found uh, who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go, your faith has made you well. And verse 20 says, Now when he was asked by a Pharisee when the kingdom of God would come, he said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. I want to read Hebrews 12 and verse 28. The Bible says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. Let us be thankful. Let us be thankful. Let us be thankful. So that we may worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. I love the Berean study Bible, which says, Therefore, since we are receiving an unshakable kingdom, let us be filled with gratitude. Let us be filled with gratitude. I've realized that there is a difference between being grateful and being filled with gratitude. You see, there are some people that are grateful. They're just like, oh, yeah, I'm grateful in my heart. I'm always grateful to God. And we say this nonchalantly, you know, like, oh, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. But when you find that there are people who are full of gratitude, who, who, who are really just on the brim of overflowing with gratitude, the people that are full with gra of gratitude, you don't have to coerce them. You don't have to force them to give thanks. You don't have to do anything. They, they just walk in and they start praising God. You're like, before the service starts, they're already thankful. They're just glad they are in the house of the Lord. And, and those people, where, whenever you come close to them, they are overflowing with thankfulness. It doesn't matter what's happening around them. They are just overflowing with thankfulness. And I wish this morning I have people in this house who are full of gratitude. 
who don't need a pastor to come and encourage them to be grateful. They are grateful because gratitude is already filling them up. Yeah. This, this morning, I have a simple mandate to look for the nine. I've been sent just to look for the nine. And I know you might be wondering, you know, this church is full. Why only nine? But uh, you'll get it as I speak to you. God is looking for the nine. He's looking for the nine. I understand that um, your theme for this year has been advancing the kingdom. And I want to address you as I just give you one extra way to advance the kingdom. Maybe just one extra tip. I believe it's very simple. It's, it's the easiest and perhaps the quickest way of accessing the kingdom of God. And it's just by learning to say thank you. Learning to say thank you. I know that uh, you have been taught many ways of advancing the kingdom of God. But we have to be people that know how to come back and say thank you. So the whole year you've been, been told about advancing the kingdom of God. And because this is a great house, you always have lofty dreams. You always are pursuing big things. And so what happens is when you are focused on advancing the kingdom, we tend to then fixate ourselves on the, the, the goal. Uh, some of you were so focused, even now as we come to the end of the year, you were so focused on your New Year's resolutions. You're so focused on your goals, your ambition. Uh, businesses are so focused on the bottom line. Before we close this year, this is what we want. And we're so focused. But the thing is, sometimes as we focus on what we want to do, we are walking and we forget that it is God that is walking with us. And we need to take a moment to just stop, turn around, and go back and say thank you. I know you've been advancing the kingdom. You have made it thus far. But there are times that you need to just turn around and go back so that you can effectively advance the kingdom. Now, when you, when you study the migration of the children of Israel from their captivity in Egypt to their promised land, you'll find that the Bible says they journeyed in stages. We always journey in stages. You don't just uh, get translated into your blessing. It happens in stages. And so what I love about the journey of the children of Israel is that every time when they uh, achieved a significant milestone, they would stop and they would erect an altar and give thanks. So that altar was an opportunity for them to just reflect on what God had done for them. And one of the significant altars that they erected, you all know it, it is called Ebenezer. Ebenezer simply means that I know that God has promised me the promised land. I know that God has promised me milk and honey. He has promised me marriage. He has promised me a business. He has promised me so much. But Ebenezer simply says, I am not there yet. But right now when I think of what God has done, if I turn back and look back, thus far the Lord has brought me. I wish I had people in this place who can say, I know I am not yet there. I know I don't have what God has promised yet. But when I think of what God has done, I'm grateful I am no longer where I used to be. I'm no longer in prison. I'm no longer in Egypt. I'm no longer a slave. I have been delivered. And thus far, the Lord has been so good. So gratitude is all about recognizing the fact that even though you are not yet there, God has been good. You see, God is more interested in the journey than the destination. <laughs> I wish I had time to help you. Because if God was more interested in the destination, the day you said yes to Jesus, he would have taken you to heaven. The reason why he left you here is he said, I know heaven is the ultimate destination, but I want to walk with you. And how you walk the walk from where you gave your life to Jesus to get in there is going to determine the kind of person that you are. So as you walk with him, he's checking your heart to see, are you grateful 
that even though you are not yet there, the fact that Jesus is walking with you is good enough. I wish I had five people in this place who are saying, I don't, I'm not yet there yet, but the fact that Jesus has been walking with me is enough to get me crazy, is enough to get me praising, is enough to get me to lift my voice. Come on, somebody, put some praise in your mouth because God... So we have to learn to be grateful. Now, the problem with our people is this. I was sharing with the first service. But the problem with our people is that we take good leaders for granted. We take people that really want to serve the Lord honestly and want to serve you in a, with a pure conscience for granted. We are so used of being manipulated and robbed that when you meet people that don't want to manipulate you or rob you or get something out of you, but they just really want you to be blessed. You know, Paul, as a great apostle, used to say that my desire is not to get anything from you. My desire is that God would add to you. And when you come across such men when you are in Africa, it's rare because most of the men of God or so-called men of God that you're used to coming across are after something from you. And, and I'm, I'm saying this because there is a true story a lady with a high profile, a prominent lady in our town, and, and she's in, in, in high circles. She came to our church um, sh looking for an appointment with me because she had heard that, you know, we're praying for people and, and, and things are happening. And she had a daughter that was very sick with some spiritual condition that uh, no one could help her with. And so sh before she got to us, she had flown all the way to Nigeria and she had gone to a specific man of God who said to her, you need to pay some ridiculous amount of money for me to pray for your daughter. So she prayed, she paid because she was desperate. And when she had paid, she got back, nothing had changed. Months later, nothing has changed, daughter is getting worse. Long story short, she comes to us. She's telling me this story and, and, and something inside of me was just like broken and, and, and deep inside, I kind of felt like, God, we need to redeem this because some men of God or so-called men of God has messed up your name. And, and I felt God saying, you need to pray for this daughter and it's gonna work. And I said to this woman, we, I'm excited to pray for your daughter. My wife and I will pray for your daughter and we trust in God for healing. And she got excited, and I'm like, oh, that's great. And before she left, she then says, how much is it going to cost? And I said, for free. Now, to my surprise, instead of her coming to the free offer, she said, I'm not bringing my daughter to you because if it is for free, there is no power. And I'm like, woman, you just paid so much money and nothing happened. Now you want me to rob you of more money. I just want to pray for you. And she was not willing. Here is what I'm saying. Our people are so used of being robbed, abused, manipulated, cheated of their hard-earned resources, that when you are a man of God that just wants to help them in the name of the Lord, they, they take you for granted. You see, she was willing to pay some crazy amount to some Nigerian pastor somewhere. But when it was for free, she, want, she was not going to take it. And I said to myself, had it been that she genuinely wanted to bless me, the right thing she should have done is, if you're praying for my daughter for free, please pray for my daughter. And after that, after the daughter is healed, I didn't ask for anything. I don't want anything because Jesus said, freely I receive, freely I give. But, but, but if she wanted to be grateful, it was upon her to bring a free will offering. You see, here is the other side of the story. When something is free, it doesn't mean that it didn't cost somebody something. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to leave it there. Because some, some, sometimes as, as African folk, we think that free means that it's free. Free means that somebody paid for it. I'm, I'm just going to park that one day. But, but, but what happens here is we need to be the kind of people that are willing to bring a free will offering to God. Not people that are willing to be bribed, manipulated to get something from God. Men of God, isn't it strange that people will come to you and you pray for them for free. They get healed 
things happen in their lives, they're blessed. They won't even come back to say thank you. But when they went out to the charlatan, the charlatan wanted a car. They brought them a car. But they don't come back with a bottle of cool drink and just say, thank you, man of God. Ah, I wish I had somebody like the leper. I wish I had somebody that you would say, after God has done something, I'm not going to forget. I am going to, out of my own accord, no one has to coerce me. No one has to force me to do anything. I am going out of my own accord to give God glory. Yeah, stay with me. So we need, we need people who know what it means to give God glory. And my screen just went blank. All right. I've done this before and I think I might have to do this again. My screen is not working. All right. So help me, God. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't stress. It's all right. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Stay with me. So isn't it an interesting, JWK, thank you. <laughs> isn't it interesting that we are willing to thank the charlatan for things they have not yet done. But when it comes to the man of God who has done something, or it comes to God who has done something, we forget. I want to I wanna talk about the concept of advancing the kingdom of God through gratitude. Here is how it works. When, when God wants to bless you, all he needs to do is to speak a word. And the thing is, God is not a son of man that he should lie or change his mind. So if God says something, he will perform exactly what he said he will do. So we need to be the kind of people that learn to say, thank you, God, at the promise. You see, way before God does anything, you need to say thank you. If your man of God came to me and said, I want to bless you with a hundred rand for whatever reason. Because of his character and because of his means, I don't have to wait for him to put a hundred rand in my hand. I am going to say thank you before he does it. Because his word is good enough. I believe he has the means to do it. But now, if God, if a man can do it, how much more God, who is faithful to his word, who watches over his word to perform it. If God says, I am going to bless you, the right thing to do is to thank him in advance. If you want to advance the kingdom of God, you have to learn to thank God in advance. In Hebrews chapter number 12, the portion of scripture we read, the Bible says, since we are receiving the kingdom that cannot be shaken. The word receiving there simply means that it is a process. You don't, you have not yet fully received it, but you are receiving a kingdom. So the pro, the, 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 there is a process between the time God promises you something and the time you actually going to receive it. And when it comes to the kingdom of God, the, the Bible speaks of the kingdom being here, but not yet. Which means that we have already received part of the kingdom, but we are going to see the full manifestation of God's kingdom. So here is what the writer of Hebrews is trying to teach us. When if you understand that you are in the process, huh, thank you Jesus. God has said you need to get that side. If you understand that you are in the process of receiving what you need to do is to learn to respond with thanksgiving to the process. The word receiving is made of two words. It is in the Greek, the word paralambonos or something like that. The, the word is made of two words, para, which means to come close. And lambano means to receive, to receive. So what the writer of Hebrews is trying to teach us is this. When you Give thanks to the Lord. You are coming close 
to receiving or to laying hold of the kingdom of God. <laughs> All it takes for you to receive what God has promised is a willingness to go back and say thank you. I know you've got great dreams. I know you've got great, great ambitions. But before you get there, if you want to get closer and closer to the promise, learn to say thank you. Thank you, God, for the promise of marriage. I don't have a boyfriend yet, but I'm thanking you anyway. Because every time you say thank you, you step closer to the promise. Thank you, God, for the promise of a business. I don't have an idea yet, but I say thank you. Because every time you say thank you, you are taking a step closer to the promise. I wish I had somebody here who God has promised something. You know that God is in the process of blessing you. You might not be there yet, but you're going to thank God anyway. Thank God I'm just in the process. Thank God that you allowed me to be a part of the process. So we have to be the kind of people that know how to thank God in advance. And when we do that, we begin to advance the kingdom of God. Now coming to my story, as we look at the case study of the ten lepers, the Bible says Jesus was coming into a town. It's an, a certain unnamed town. And this town didn't have a name because they were in the, on, on the outskirts of two cities, Galilee and Samaria. Am I winning? Don't worry about it. I really don't worry about it. I've got it. I've got it. I'm trusting God for this one. <laughs> so we are in between two, two cities, Galilee and Samaria. Now, if you understand the, the history of lepers, if you had leprosy, if you had leprosy, they would ostracize you. They would kick you out of the town and they would reject you and they would kick you out so that you are not allowed in the town. So these 10 lepers were not allowed in Galilee. They were not allowed in Samaria. So they lived somewhere in the middle. Uh, thank God for Jesus, who even though you are not allowed to come close to him, even though you are not allowed to come into the city, he is willing to come into your brokenness. He is willing to come into the leprous colony. He is willing to risk everything to come close to you. You might, you might not be allowed to come to a house, but God says, I'm coming to your house. And so the Bible says there were 10 lepers. When they heard that Jesus was coming into town, they stood afar off. Some of us have conditions that are keeping us far from Jesus. I wish I had time to go into your condition. That very thing that you know every time when you come to church, you wish the pastor doesn't pray or touch on your issue because it's keeping you far from Jesus. However, these 10 lepers said, we are going to shout out to Jesus for mercy. So they said, Jesus, ah, have mercy on us. Now, they cried for mercy because mercy is so powerful. Let me tell you about mercy. You know, everybody knows about grace, which is unmerited favor, when God gives you things that you do not deserve. But the other side is God's mercy, when God withholds what you deserve. <laughs> so let me tell you, there are some times when you look at your life and you see like it seems like God has not given you any blessings. It feels like God has not given you things that you hoped he would give you. But I want to tell you, you need to learn to thank God even in those moments. Because sometimes all you need to thank God for is the fact that he did not give you what you deserve. Ah, let me help you. You deserve to go to hell because of your sin. You deserve to be punished because of what you did last night. But the truth of the matter is mercy said no. Mercy said no. You deserve to be in a prison somewhere. But God's mercy said no. God's mercy is what has been protecting you from the disease that all the other men has. It's not because you are clever. It's because mercy said no. 
Ah, I wish I had somebody who knows how to thank God for his mercies. The Bible says in Psalm 136, ah, they praise the Lord for he is good. Praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. I wish I had somebody who understood that all it takes for me to praise God is the realization that God has been merciful with me. If God never blessed you with anything ever again, his mercy is good enough for you to get into some praise dance. I know you want him to give you unmerited favor, but his mercy is enough to get you to burst out in song. Uh, I know you don't get it, but I'm just going to help with my brother. I'm just going to praise God for his mercies for a moment. I'm going to thank God because the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Thank God for a new set of mercies. Thank God that this morning when I woke up, mercy said no. I don't care what the devil had planned against me, but God's mercy said no. He said, I know the weapon might be fashioned against you, but my mercy said no. Praise ye the Lord in this place. So what I like about the story is that Jesus doesn't lay hands on them. He gives them a simple instruction. Go and show yourself to your muruti. <laughs> a simple instruction can change your life. Go to church. I know you need a breakthrough. Go to church. I know it doesn't make sense. But if you could only obey him and go to church, something would happen. So let me tell you the irony of this story. The thing is that the, the, the lepers were kicked out of the town because they had leprosy. And the only person that could allow them back into the town was a high priest whose responsibility was to scrutinize their skin and see if they were healed. But now Jesus tells them to go to the high priest before they were healed. I wish I had somebody who's not hearing what the Spirit is saying in this place. You are not yet healed. But if you can obey me and go, somewhere along the way something might happen. So I can imagine the lepers. They said, we are just going to obey the instruction that doesn't make sense. We're going to church anyway. We are going to take steps to the high priest. And so they started walking, going to the high priest. But I can, I can imagine that they had reservations. They were walking slow because they did not... Uh, see the reason why they should present themselves to the high priest but they kept walking I'm here to encourage somebody maybe you've been coming to church the whole year and you've been trusting God for a breakthrough it looks like nothing is happening in your life but keep walking another step is going to get you closer to your breakthrough you don't have the blessing yet but keep walking and so the bible says while they were on their way i can imagine every step of the way they are scrutinizing themselves and they're like i'm not yet healed we're getting closer but i'm not yet healed and somewhere along the way the bible says they were immediately healed the one leper looked and said my goodness me i've been healed and the other one said let me check and they said i'm also healed now, at that point, all the nine lepers decided there's no need to take a slow, slow walk to the high priest anymore. It's time to run to the high priest. And so, nine of them took off in high speed like Hussein Bolt. They were running to the high priest. Ah, but there was one leper 
when he was just about to take off, he said, excuse me, I just remembered. Had it not been for Jesus, I would not be healed. So he turned around while everybody else was running to the high priest. He ran to the Messiah. I'm coming back to Jesus. Jesus, I'm coming back to say thank you. I'm coming back to acknowledge you. I appreciate what you have done for me. I appreciate what your grace has done for me. And so he came. The Bible says with a loud voice. Let me speak to you for a moment. Some of you, when you are crying for help, you know how to lift your voice. When you are at the altar, you cry the loudest. But when God blesses you, you want to be all dignified. I'm praising God in my heart. <laughs> no, 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 no. Inexpressed gratitude is, is, is ingratitude. Unexpressed gratitude, brother, is ingratitude. You can't say I'm thanking God in my heart. When you wanted healing, you said, Jesus, now that you are healed, you want to be cool and prim and proper. This leper ran to Jesus, fell on his feet. Jesus, I'm here to thank you. I'm here to give you praise. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to praise you. I'm just going to praise you. And I love what Jesus said. Jesus said, were there not ten who were cleansed? Ah. You see, what surprised Jesus was that of all the people that he expected to come back and say thank you, he didn't expect a Samaritan leper. The Jewish guys that were healed that know what the psalmist says about giving thanks to the Lord. They did not come back. But the leper, who was a Samaritan, an outcast, who doesn't know the law, they don't come to church as frequent. They remembered, I'm just coming back to say thank you. And Jesus said, were there not ten? Let me help you. Were there not ten who had COVID last year? Were there not 10 whose businesses were going under? Were there not 10 whose marriages were breaking up? Were there not 10 who were sick? Were there not 10 who were just about to be retrenched? But where are the nine? How is it that you were with me on the altar? When the bishop and the pastor of this house prayed. But now that you are healed, you are going to Cape Town to party. I'm coming back to the house of the Lord to say thank you. Jesus said, were there not ten? But where are the nine? I've been sent all the way from Port Alfred to ask you a question. Were you not part of the blessings that God has released over this house? Were you not part of the healings? Were you not part of everything, the grace, the unmerited favor that was flowing in this house? But where are you now? Where are the nine? Where are those that are willing to come back to say thank you? I don't know about you. But I'm coming to say thank you. If I had an offering here, I would say thank you, Jesus. I don't know where the nine are, but I am here to say thank you. I don't know where the nine have disappeared to, but I'm back here to say thank you. I'm here to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for being so kind. I don't know where the other jokers went. But I'm here, oh God. I'm here to say thank you. I'm here with my hands lifted up. I'm here to say thank you. 
I'm here, God, with every breath that is within me. I'm here to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I made it back to church. Thank you, my Lord. Come on, everybody. Lift up your voice in the spirit of thanksgiving. Praise ye the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, bless the name. Stand on your feet and bless his name. He has been so good to you. Look at what he has done. There are many people who wanted to see this day. There are many people who wanted to see this day. But they are not here. But here you are. Here you are. Here you are. Praise the name of Jesus. 